But now let's talk about the unique function in the NumPy package. So as you can see, I have defined an array which is called x, which is a bunch of strings a, 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 b, and c, c. And suppose that I want to calculate the unique values in x. So in order to do so, I simply use the unique function in the NumPy package and I pass x and I want to store the results in a variable, let's say called u. And here I want to print the u variable, which is the unique values. And as you can see, this is the result, which is the unique values in x. But now let's talk about how to calculate the corresponding counts of these unique values. So as you can see, the corresponding count of a should be three because we have a three of that. The corresponding count of b should be one because we have a one of that. And the corresponding count for c should be two because we have two of that. So that's it. In order to do so, I pass another argument, which which is called return counts and I pass through. Basically, it means that we want to return the counts as well. So I store the result in another variable, which is called C, because now this function returns a two value. The first one is the unique values, and now the second one is the counts, the corresponding counts. So let's print the corresponding counts as well. And if I run the code, you can see these are the corresponding counts for these unique values. And now if you want to get a better looking result, you can combine whatever you've learned in Python in order to make the result more beautiful. For example, suppose that you want to get a dictionary from these values. So in order to do so, you can, as I said, you can combine whatever you've learned in Python. So for example, you can simply use the zip function and you want to zip u and c, I mean the unique values and their corresponding counts. And then you pass that to dict function in order to convert that to a dictionary. And now let's print that dictionary. And now you can see here is the result. It says that the count of A is 3, the count of B is 1, the count of C is 2. And as it is very obvious, you can change these values. And for example, it can pass numbers in order to calculate the unique values and their corresponding counts. So if I run the code, you can see here is the results. And these are the unique values, 10, 20, and 30. And these are the corresponding counts of each unique value. Now I really suggest you to watch this video, which is on the screen now.